Well, damn, 2020's nearly over, huh? Thank the Lord for that. Although this year was particularly crappy for, like, everything, this year did have quite a few really solid games to play. That's why I figured I'd make a top 5 list to talk about some of my favorites. You might see more on some of these games on my channel in the future, but for now, I'll just tell you my abridged thoughts. Let's get started! Alright, I need to get this off my chest. I like The Last of Us Part 2. Like, a lot. I feel that the discourse around the game has been so incredibly toxic. Anyone who dares speak good about this game is immediately regarded as either a social justice warrior, a dumb idiot for liking something so obviously horrible, or if you're really unlucky, you might even land a death threat or two. I'm gonna get into some spoilers here, so if you haven't played the game yet, just skip to the next entry on the list. Okay, so don't get me wrong, there are tons of things you can completely justifiably criticize this game for. There have been quite a few great videos talking about this, but I still think the overall discussion around the game isn't even really about the game itself. People talk more about political messages this game was trying to send, of which I generally think there weren't really any particularly harmful ones in there. But I have to stop myself here, because I'm already going off track from the actual game itself, which I think is really great. It's by no means as fantastic as the first game, I think absolutely anyone can agree on that, but there is still so much good here. Ellie is still a wonderful character, and so is her new girlfriend Dina. As a gay guy myself, it's just really great to see more acknowledgement for people in the LGBT plus community. The games I play most, which tend to be from Japanese publishers, often don't see this kind of in-depth representation, and it's incredibly refreshing to see it done so well. Dina doesn't feel as important as Joel did for the original game, but she is still funny, has her own quirks, and plays off of Ellie incredibly well. It was a delight to be around them. The elephant in the room, Abby, was definitely on my hit list at first. I was like, oh man, I can't wait to shoot up the bitch who killed Joel. But playing through her side honestly really made me care for her and Lev in particular. Abby's reason for killing Joel was essentially the same as Ellie's reason for killing Abby, and so I still don't really get the hate for Abby here. If we played as her in the first game, everyone would be on her side, 100%. Personally, I could really start to see the humanity in Abby, even more so when she meets Lev and Yara. The conflict with Abby and these two was great, and seeing Abby slowly come out of her shell and change her ways was very satisfying in its own right. I can't speak for the trans community and how they perceive Lev's portrayal of trans identity in the game, but I really respect that Naughty Dog made a trans character so central to this game's narrative. That said, I don't think the other supporting characters on either side really make much of an impact in general, except for maybe Tommy and Owen. They're all honestly kind of boring and didn't leave much of a lasting impression on me. The pacing of the story also leaves a lot to be desired. The general structure of the story could have been greatly reworked. As it is now, the game's pace comes to a grinding halt halfway through, and it was honestly kind of demoralizing to play through it more at first. Naughty Dog tried to do something creative here, but it just didn't work out that well. While the story was the most important aspect to me, the gameplay was probably the most thrilling and engaging throughout. The gunplay was incredibly satisfying, and the survival and puzzle solving elements kept me on my toes at all times. I liked the limited amount of resources that were available, and some boss fights really see how far they can push your skills. Overall, I thought The Last of Us Part 2 was a really solid game, but I'd be lying if I said that I'd want to see another game continuing the storyline. I feel like it said all it needed to. Maybe if we explore this universe with different characters, unrelated to the first two games, that could be interesting. But for now, I think it's time we say goodbye to Ellie, Joel, and Abby. The Last of Us Part 2 sits at number 5 on this list. So, as I announced at the end of my Xenoblade Chronicles video, my video after that one would have been on Persona 5 Royal. While I'm putting that project on hold temporarily, I am going to pursue it in the future. As such, I'm not going too deep into my thoughts on this one. 
As you can probably tell, I think it's very good. There are definitely a lot of flaws holding the game back though. The writing can often be pretty bad, there's a lot of repetition of things the player is more than likely very aware of, and at the start of the game, combat can be pretty RNG dependent, even more so on higher difficulties. But at the end of the day, the story is still pretty thrilling to watch unfold. The third semester is absolutely excellent, and so are the music and visuals, as we've come to expect. That's all I'm really going to say about P5R here. For now, it's going to number 4 on this list. Stay tuned for the full video on this game coming sometime in 2021. Now this is one that I originally didn't have my eye on but ended up shockingly surprised by. I don't tend to get very excited for indie games very often, but when I saw one of my friends play Hades, I was sold. The combat looked so incredibly satisfying, the art and other visuals looked so stunning, it was just beyond captivating. The enthusiasm only grew as I played more of Hades. Frankly, I haven't played it as much as I would have liked, but what I have played already left such a strong impression on me, I can't stop thinking about it regardless. The story is told in such an interesting way, and it's honestly another incentive to go on multiple runs, aside from the power increases you get from the roguelike elements. Build variety is also a very strong part of this game. There are so many different traits you can obtain through your runs, that it's always fun to try out new things and see how far it takes you. Alternatively, it can become a challenge in and of itself to see how far you can push the game, how you can tip the balance of the game in your favor as much as possible. All of these elements combine together in such a wonderful experience and I haven't even touched on the better part of what this game has to offer. If the footage you've been seeing on screen has left you even slightly interested, I highly recommend you give Hades a try. You can tell the devs put their hearts and souls into this game, and they absolutely deserve all the support they can get. Hades crawls its way to number 3 on this list. I think there isn't a game that got announced this year that had me more hyped than Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. It was everything I wanted a sequel to Hyrule Warriors to be, and more. Not only would it incorporate the gameplay from Hyrule Warriors that we'd all gotten to know and love, it would also bring in elements from Breath of the Wild. I think those new elements are the strongest additions to this game by far. The world map that handles everything from story to character progression allows for a lot more freedom when upgrading your characters, and it's definitely still just as satisfying to clear out as the badges in Hyrule Warriors 1. The story being a sort of prequel was great, and I even enjoyed the dumb plot twist near the end. It was just stupid fun. The characters' movesets are also great across the board. Some are definitely more useful than others, but they can all be very satisfying to play. The fact that they all have different uses for Sheikah runes, and the fact that the runes are much more common in combat than the items in the first game ever were, makes that part of the moveset much more important. The combat feels so much more dynamic with the runes, getting the hang of using them at the right times just makes you feel like a badass, and it is the only way to maximize your effectiveness on the battlefield. And it's a good thing the game has all that going for it, because overall the game wasn't very challenging. There were definitely some missions that pushed me to my limits, but nowhere near the level that Hyrule Warriors on Wii U did on a constant basis, though that could have something to do with my difficulty setting. I might try to replay the game on a harder difficulty to see how that goes. To end on an overwhelmingly positive note, I don't think it can be understated how great of a job the team at Omega Force did to recreate the world of Breath of the Wild in a way that allows the Warriors gameplay to flourish within it. Overall, it is still the world from Breath of the Wild that you're exploring, yet these maps all feel like logical inclusions in a Warriors game. None of the maps are too large, have plenty of points of interest, there's once again Korok seats to find all over the place, and the rearranged music from Breath of the Wild that plays within these maps are all I think anyone could ask for. Okay, maybe I could have done without the Korok seats, but still, this attention to detail is remarkable. If you're a fan of either The Last Hyrule Warriors, Breath of the Wild, or both, I highly, highly recommend you pick this one up. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity fights its way to number 2 on this list. Before we move on to number 1, I wanted to highlight a few honorable mentions. These are games that I have played and enjoyed a ton, but for some reason that I'll get into, didn't make it into this list. To start us off, I have Genshin Impact. 
This game was definitely great fun for a while. I played it a ton and don't necessarily regret my time with it. The character designs are pretty striking, the world looks gorgeous, and there's definitely quite a lot of stuff to do and explore. But once you run out of things to explore, that's kind of that. I know the game has just released its second major update with a new region to explore, and that might draw me back in for a bit, but I don't think it'll hold my attention for long. I really like grinding characters up in gacha games usually, but even that could not hold my attention in Genshin. The process is just so slow and boring. Other gacha games usually add auto battle or something similar. Genshin doesn't have it. This makes doing the same thing over and over again a slog. Why would I bother wasting my time doing all this stuff manually when I could play a game I actually enjoy while auto battling other gacha games on the side? For this one I'd say, have fun with it for a while. It's free, it's worth checking out. Exploring everything for the first time still provides that Breath of the Wild-like sense of wonder. However, be prepared for the fun to be significantly diminished once you've explored all major areas. Next up is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Wow, what an incredibly pleasant surprise this was. It was a nostalgia blast in all the right ways. The art style is adorable, the soundtrack is still a bop, and the Mystery Dungeon gameplay loop is still one of the most satisfying out of all dungeon crawlers. The game is definitely fantastic, but at the end of the day, I still think this entry leaves some things to be desired in the story department, and I guess it just didn't have as much of an impact on me as all the other games on this list did. Only barely though. I still highly recommend this game to anyone interested. It's a great remake, and I can only hope there will be an Explorer's DX sometime in the future. Finally, I wanted to highlight Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. This is definitely one that would have made the list if I had more time with it. I love the gameplay a lot, and I assume there will be some great implications for the overall Kingdom Hearts lore hidden in this game, but I just didn't have enough time to see it through. A Kingdom Hearts rhythm game is honestly such a great idea, I'm surprised it hasn't been done before. The soundtracks in Kingdom Hearts are always phenomenal, so obviously in Melody of Memory, combining all of them together is a slam dunk. There are some strange song choices here and some even stranger missing tracks, but overall it is still a great list. I'm not at all disappointed. If you're a Kingdom Hearts fan, you already have this game, but if you somehow don't, pick it up. Rhythm Game fans will probably get a kick out of this one too. Man, what could I say about this game that hasn't already been said? It's just a masterpiece, through and through. The developers have shown an absolute mastery of their craft. The story is phenomenal, the characters are lovable, the gameplay is thoroughly engaging, the world is beyond creative, and the soundtrack. Oh god, the soundtrack. Of course, I am talking about none other than Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Like I mentioned before, I have made an hour-long breakdown on this game, so if you want to hear more in-depth thoughts on its story, characters, gameplay, everything really, I urge you to check that out. It will probably be linked somewhere. For those who think an hour is a bit on the long side, I'll sum up my thoughts briefly. All the things I mentioned just now are absolutely fantastic. Shulk is easily the best protagonist in any form of media I've ever seen, the story is masterfully built up, and the payoffs are beyond satisfying. The combat, while maybe strange at first, allows for a lot of strategy, the world is wonderfully crafted, and exploring every inch of it was a delight. The new future-connected epilogue left me... disappointed, to say the least, but overall I would still recommend this game to any RPG fan. It is a must-play. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition only sees a future on the number one spot on this list. With all that said, thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell, leave a like if you liked the video, a dislike if you disliked it, and let me know in the comments what you thought of my takes on all these games, and what your top 5 games of the year are. If you've been around on my channel for a bit, you might be able to see that my channel art and thumbnail look quite a bit different. This is all part of my new channel rebrand. We got a nice Persona 5 style going on in all of this, and I am super happy with how it all turned out. 
Big shout out to Tyler McGrath on Twitter for making these wonderful assets. Go follow him to see more of his amazing work. Link in the pinned comment. Also check the pinned comment for my own Twitter and Discord links. With that, thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Oh, bye oh, bye. Oh, bye oh, bye. Oh, bye oh, bye. 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 Thank Christ's year is over.